Hey everybody, Mark McComb here from Microchip Minutes, and in this episode, we're going to use the Timer 2 with Hardware Limit Timer to actually debounce a switch without writing a single line of code. When you activate a switch, there's some period of time where the electrical contacts within that switch are going to bounce before settling. You can see that here when I press and release the push button on the express board a bunch of times. If my microcontroller is configured to make something happen when it detects an activated switch, this could lead to misreads. As in this case here, the microcontroller would actually detect two switch activations, whereas the user only pressed the switch once. Traditionally, in applications that use a microcontroller, switch bounce or noise is eliminated using a debounce software routine that will check for an activated switch, wait a short period of time to give that switch time to settle, and then recheck to see if the switch is indeed still activated. If so, the microcontroller will react accordingly and execute some software, otherwise that first switch activation is ignored. The problem with this method, other than of course forcing the developer to write and then debug code, is that this algorithm ties up the central processing unit on the microcontroller, preventing it from doing anything else while this debouncing routine is being executed. However, there is a hardware-based core independent alternative available using 8-bit PIC microcontrollers featuring the Timer 2 with hardware limit timer peripheral. Timer 2 will actually automate the debouncing process using its monostable mode of operation. In this mode, when the switch is first activated, it's going to start a timer counting, ignoring any subsequent bouncing. Once the timer count reaches a predetermined value, the timer peripheral will will produce a signaling event that can be used to indicate that a valid switch activation has been detected. In this example, we're going to debounce the switch on the MPLAB Express board, which when pressed will toggle the LEDs on and off. I have MPLAB Express opened in my browser in which I've created a new project for the PIC16F18855 and have the co-configurator open. That's all we need, so let's start the clock. Inside of the co-configurator, I'm using the default settings in the system module. Add the timer to peripheral from the device resources here to the project resources by double clicking on it. Highlighting timer 2 and project resources, I'll select the system clock as the clock source for the module. I'll go ahead and pre-scale that clock source by 128, which will give us an available time period between 128 microseconds and 32.768 milliseconds. I'll set the timer period to 30 milliseconds by typing directly into this field here. Now what we want to happen is that when the switch is first activated, timer 2 is going to start counting at a rate of our system clock scale by 128. After 30 milliseconds, we want the timer to send out a signal to indicate that the switch was indeed pressed. 30 milliseconds should be enough of a delay to allow the switch to finish bouncing, but should be short enough that a user only has time to press the push button once. Let's go down into the pin manager and tie the switch to our timer 2 input by connecting the T2N signal to the RA5 pin, which is connected to the switch on the express board. Back in the timer 2 hardware settings, let's select the timer 2 input pin as the external reset source. We'll select mono stable as our control mode and then have the timer start counting when the switch pin signal, which is pulled high normally, transitions from high to low or what is known as the falling edge. Finally, let's add a configurable logic cell from the device resources and configure it as toggle flip-flop by using the JK flip-flop mode, tying both J and K inputs high. Now the output of the flip-flop will toggle high to low or low to high with every clock transition. That clock will be the output signal from our timer 2 peripheral that signals when the timer has reached the 30 milliseconds we defined earlier. Let's go down into the pin manager and tie the output of the configurable logic cell to all four of the pins connected to the LEDs on the express board, so RA0 through to RA3. We can hit the generate button now. We'll go ahead and click OK. And that's pretty much all we need for this application, so let's go ahead and stop the clock. Returning to the MPLAB Express IDE, we don't need to add any code as this application is completely implemented in hardware. We'll click on the Make and Program Device button and then drag and drop the generated hex file from our browser downloads folder to the Express Board drive to program the PIC16F18855. Now every time we press the switch on the Express Board, all LEDs will toggle on and then when we release that switch, the LEDs will toggle off. For more project examples, to visit our wiki or to take part in the MPLAB Express forums, please visit mplabexpress.microchip.com. My name is Mark McComb. Thanks for watching.